What's going on people? In today's video, how to edit faster in Adobe Premiere Pro. Welcome back to another video guys, my name is Jack. I produce weekly content based around video editing, videography, and how to make money making videos. Subscribe now if you're interested. On screen right now is Adobe Premiere Pro. As per the request of Salman, whose comment is on screen right now, uh, Salman says tips for editing faster in Adobe Premiere Pro. And that was a response to a comment that I posted on my community section saying, what video should I make next? And uh, you know what I mean? A couple people hit me back with some actual video ideas that they had in mind and wanted to see, and this is one of them. So Salman, you're the first video that I'm uh, you know, doing from that list of uh, people who suggest to me stuff. Let's do it. Now, first off is gonna be presets. Um, specifically, effect presets. There's a couple different types of presets. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you some stuff later on, but effect presets could be a great way to actually save yourself time. For example, here's a very basic title sequence. You know, we've, we've just got some clips from uh, this BenQ product that I reviewed the other day, and I've just put some stupid text there as as to show like some lower third text. Um, and, the, and the text is just kind of, uh, you know what I mean, uh, animating across with some keyframes, but it's also got this kind of nice um, highlight with the shadow, and uh, obviously it makes it stand out a lot. Now, uh, that could be quite a pain to actually replicate this kind of effect just on all four different pieces of text, so simply using some effect presets will be how we edit way faster and save ourselves that time. So what we would do first is create the actual original preset that we would use for all the following pieces of text. So we actually create one piece of text and let's just go ahead and say example right here and we'll actually go ahead and actually press control A to actually highlight the whole thing. Go to graphics, actually go here. Let's go ahead and just select my font. Um, do, 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 Gotham Ultra. Actually press these two to put it in the middle and uh, you know, level up the text just a little bit. All right, there you go. So we got some text, boom. Now we're gonna wanna put it in the middle just for the time being, even though that's where it's not gonna belong. And we're gonna wanna do a quick animation. So let's go ahead and put a uh, you know, uh, keyframe right there, trim this down just to the size of one of the clips and uh, you know, just scroll along a little bit and actually just pull this text just a along a little bit, right? So if you look at this number, we go from 960 to kind of 1025, right? And now if we give this a play, it just kind of works its way across a little bit. So we've created just a little uh, you know, animation in terms of the movement, right? So it's just working its way across a little bit um, and uh, obviously it's animated. Now it's definitely not gonna go in the middle, but we're gonna reach, re uh, readjust the position once we've actually done the second element, which is the highlight, uh, AKA the shadow, just something to make it stand out. And we're gonna go down to uh, you know, video effects. Um, uh, in fact, we could just go ahead and type in shadow and uh, we're gonna take this drop shadow effect, put it on there, actually scroll down, and go ahead and just put that on all the way, put the softness on 10, and go ahead and press Control C or Command C if you're on Mac, and Control V and V. So we got three, we just pasted that shadow three times, so we got a very bold shadow. Then, obviously we wanna copy all of these preferences, so uh, except for the actual, um, you know what I mean, text itself, because if we copy the text, it'll copy the exact title, right? We just want to apply this to put the, uh, you know, position um, and of course the uh, shadow effects to it. So let's go ahead and just click anywhere on this effects area, uh, section and press control A. Control A. Um, my bad, I was clicking on the actual effects. Go down here where there's kind of no effect, kind of click this blank space and then press control A and it's going to highlight everything. Then just come up here and press control click and untick the actual text so it doesn't put the actual specific words here and we just copy all the actual animations. Go up here to effects, save preset and save this as, uh, you know, uh, time saver, boom. So we press time saver, open up the presets right here and we have a thing called time saver right there. And uh, you know, simple as that. We can then obviously go, uh, you know, here and once we've created this animation, what we wanna do is click on this one. So the example, go down here and, uh, you know, oops, uh, <laughs> I changed the, the thing. Click the actual position of the actual text layer itself, and then we can actually, oops, then we can actually um, change the position of it just like that without actually affecting the animation, put it wherever we want. And then we can actually go to the next point, just create some random text, call this, uh, you know, next, next example. And this time we can obviously trim it down and just simply go over here to our time saver, drag it on, and it's gonna be the exact thing with the animation compared to wherever we obviously put this, this text. Then we can go down on the actual text layer and again get the position of the text layer 
and put it kind of wherever we want. So if we want this one down here now, or if we want it over here now, wherever we want, and it will have the animation, plus it will have the, um, you know, shadow. And obviously we can replicate this a bunch of times, uh, you know, third, third text, boom, pop it in the middle, um, chop that down. Actually, we just go ahead and just drag the time saver onto it. And then just go down here again, get the position and, you know, put it, for example, down here, wherever we want it. And it's going to work its way across. And that's how we save some time in terms of doing titles. Now, color. Color is going to be the next one. If we want to actually go ahead and take a sequence that is, you know, a whole bunch of clips, they're obviously shot in the same place. We want to kind of grade them all, but we don't want to have to do an individual color grade to all of them. Obviously, uh, you know, that could be very time consuming, could definitely be quite an effort. And, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to get around that. So first off, all we want to go ahead and do is just simply make, uh, make an adjustment layer, right? So how will we do that? Simply click into your actual project, go up here to file, go to new adjustment layer, press OK. Simple as that. We can now drag it in and put it over the clips. Now adjustment layer is great to tie all the clips together to make them look the same, but also to apply some presets. We'll get to, get to that in a second. So if we go over to color, obviously if this adjustment layer is over the top of all these three clips, anything we do to this adjustment layer, for example, bringing up that, that, bringing that up, bringing that down, uh, that probably down a little bit, up, down, basically just grading it a little bit more, that is going to apply to all of these different clips. But also what it can do is you see how this first clip is obviously a little bit nicer than this second clip because this one's pretty blurred, uh, pretty, um, what's called, uh, over, over exposed. We can obviously chop up the adjustment layer and then, uh, you know, just, just adjust each one of these layers just slightly. So they all have pretty much the same grade. But for example, we want to just take down the whites on that one so that the uh, you know, sky isn't shining too much. And obviously the second one as well is looking like we're going to want to bring it down uh, a, a, a fair bit. Um, bringing that up, bringing that up a little bit. You, you know what I mean? You can basically just do a adjustment, but also what you can do is presets in fact. So let's go ahead and just delete that, drag this adjustment layer over the top and let's go ahead and mess with some of the presets, which can save you so much time in color grading the whole thing. So we could go up here, go to the input LUT and just go select one of them. Now this one's great. This is built in the Alexa V3 K1 S1 log C2 video. Absolutely great, simple color correction. And it is a LUT AKA just a simple preset. And you know, you, you, you know, it would take quite a little while to actually bring all these dials, you know, left, right, whatever, to actually adjust them to the point where it's a good color grade. Um, and a professional looking one, or you could just use one of these, um, you know, presets, these LUTs. And also you can always go over here to the opacity if it's too much, for example, here, and just bring the opacity down a little bit and adjust it to where it actually looks uh, kind of organic and natural, not like an over correction. But just with a simple preset, you see, I'm turning it on and off. You see, it's brought so much more uh, depth to this picture, like just so much more. And, uh, you know, overall color grading, color correcting, very, very useful. And with kind of a simple preset like that, um, which is built in, you know, you could do a lot, but there's loads of other LUTs. You can even buy LUTs, stuff like that. Um, but definitely a time saver. Now, finally, say you're trying to add, uh, you know, stuff over the top of a commentary, or it doesn't even have to be, but say, you, you know, I'm just going to show you how to save some time with transitioning stuff into frames. So for example, this is a random footage of me. I've removed the audio because I'm talking about something different to what I'm using as this example. But say I was talking about specific things, say I was talking about some, uh, some objects or something like that. And we wanted to edit some stuff on. So, and, uh, you know, we, we wanted to save some time. Say we had loads of B roll to edit throughout this. And this was like a 45 minute video or something. We had to edit like a hundred pieces of B roll on, and they all had to have nice transitions. And it's such an effort to animate all that stuff on and off every single time, what we could simply do is just add a uh, default transition. So if we go down here, uh, minimize presets, open the video transitions, and I actually go to, for example, uh, you know, 3D motion we could do, we could do dissolve, all of these different ones, you know, page turn, all these different ones, slide. I've done slide and I actually go ahead and come over to slide, right click, push and go ahead and select default. But obviously you can select default on any of them and it will pop up with this little blue circle. But I'm going to show you why I do push because when you do push, you have a very cool way to actually kind of hack time in terms of putting B-roll in. So say I just said something about, um, you know, uh, this, which is uh, a camera, right? Say I just said something about a camera at this point, we could obviously drag that in and 
go click on the clip, which is potentially going to be B-roll over the top when I'm talking about it, and simply press Control D. And if we uh, zoom in, we can see that it's added a transition to the front and the end. And the transition it adds is the one that you set as your default. And now simply say I'm talking, I'm talking, boop, 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 and a camera. Boom. It animates itself on. And not to mention it also animates itself out with the click of just Control D. So it saves so much time. Say we had, like, like I said, 100 pieces of B-roll throughout this whole video, right? And we had to animate all of them in and out. That is an amazing time saver. And in fact, it also works for text. So say, say you know, um, uh, I, I said something like uh, the price of something or something like that. Um, it would be, again, pretty simple to animate this on. All we do is create the actual text layer, put it where we wanted it to be. For example, there drag it along a little bit, you know, wherever it wanted to be again and press control D and boom, it is going to animate itself there. And when it actually gets to the point of animating it out, it's going to fly off just by pressing control D and you know, there's loads of other cool ones you could do with all of these, like the slide, the center split, the split, the wipe, all sorts of different stuff. There's even these immersive video ones, which are great. These are absolutely awesome. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show you one of these right now. They're pretty cool there. They're pretty dope. If I set this as my default, I could go here, press control D, and this is going to animate in just like that, which is awesome. Looks very, very cool just by pressing one button and it's also gonna animate itself out just like that. And that one right there is one of my favorite. In fact, that looks great. I forgot how great these immersive video ones are, but that right there is the video, guys. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, I don't know why you're not. If you made it to this point of the video, you literally may as well, to be honest. Um, again, shout out to Salman for suggesting the video. If you got any other suggestions, tell me in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video, which is about to start now.